Oh no! Hi, welcome to King Bespoke Creations. Today we're going to do the third video on how to carve something and today we're going to look at lettering. Now there's two different types that we can do. We can either do pop-out lettering where we carve around the letters like that, which is very much uh, using the cut-to-cut -cut techniques that we've talked about in other videos. Or we can do the internal carving, which is a little bit more likely what you've seen on signs and things where you actually carve the letters into the wood like that. Two different techniques, one slightly easier than the other. Let's dive in and see how it's done. So first of all we need to find our center point. Now this length that I have is 86 centimeters long so I need to put a mark at 43. Sharp pencil but only using light pressure. Make sure we're not actually putting a dent in the wood. Now that'd be really easy especially with pine. Now I could use the tape measure sideways on to measure that works out at six so i can just put that at three but here's a little thing have you guys seen these this is a center finding ruler and they are superb because not only do you get the normal measurements from the end across but they also can start in the middle working out which means for any width i can put my ruler across and yep, I've got 30 mil going out that way and 30 mil going out that way. So it pinpoints where that center is. Okay, so there's my center point. I can put a nice little cross through the middle of there. And I know where that is. I'll put a link in the description to get yourself one of these. They're only seven or eight pounds. So they're not expensive, but really, really useful. So then we're going to cut things out. We're going to use our knife. Really useful little knife. It's really easy to hold. Again, I'll put a link in the description to grab one of these. Again, very, very useful. Um, we're going to mark off what those letters are doing. Now, I'm going to do these down and across uh, sections first. I'm not going to do these top ones. Now, the reason for that is because we're using tape, I could just go straight across the top of that, straight across the bottom of there, but then as soon as I start cutting this out, it's all gonna flap and peel off. So by leaving those top lines on to last, those letters are gonna stay stuck down until we really need to get rid of them, okay? So, now we're ready to start chiseling. What I'm gonna do is work my way through here, so I'm getting the corner of my chisel into that knife line so it peels it out there we go and that's fine to go all the way across because all of this round here will be removed so he's taking chunks out at a time now i can feel there can you see that's just starting to spoil just there that wood's starting to come up further than the chisel now i don't want that to happen so I need to come out and start coming in from the other side. It's working better. So only the wood that I want to come off with my chisel is moving. It's not splitting. It's not being unpredictable. Which means, there we go, get rid of that bit. That means that's going to work quite nicely. And again, with this, all we need to decide is how deep do you want to go? And realistically, that's up to you. I like to go a couple of mil, make it actually stand out a bit, get some definition on there. So the corner of my chisel is heading into that delve look. And then I can kind of angle my chisel away to grade that out. And I have complete control over the depth and the width of that cut there, whether I go all the way out to the line, or maybe I just leave it at that width. 
I might not do that. I might just leave it at that depth for now. I can always go all the way around and decide if that looks nice. Or maybe decide I want to take a little bit more out. Right, okay, now, this can sometimes happen, especially with a soft wood like this. So I've chipped into there, and that part of the T is starting to come up and loose, look. Okay, now what you need to do at that point is stop. Okay. And get some super glue. Okay, any old super glue will do. Dab that around and underneath, trying without splitting it off completely. Okay, that can go on there. Do some of that. Hold it down, make sure it's set nice. Cheeky little squirt with some accelerator. And by the time you put your toes down, that's ready to go again. So, now let's look at carving the letters into the wood. I've made a slightly larger one here because it's going to be easier to see. Now this is a trickier thing to do. We've got our sides coming down and we've got the top. Now what we want to do is create a V shape in the centre. So it's going to come in like that to meet in the middle. So all of this waste needs to be removed. But that means when we get to the end, we either have a flat end where the, the carve just goes straight down, which doesn't look very nice, or we try and meet everything coming into the middle. So we have an end that's gonna come in like that. So we're gonna carve in from the sides up to a center line and sketch that center line in. Just eyeball it, see where it comes, and when we get to the ends, we need to triangulate that. So there's a lot of trying to see where your chisel's gonna land underneath the wood. Let's have a look. Now I'm going to stop there. I'm not going to go up to the very end. I'm going to stop in line with the point that I'm trying to make on that triangle. So I'm coming from one side and now we're coming to the other. Not too far, we're certainly not trying to do this all in one go, because that will just split those fibers off and cause us some big problems. And transfer to the other side again. It's a little tricky when the camera's in the way. I want you to see everything that we need. And just a little bit each time. And then you'll see those fibers just gently lifting up. And back to the other. I'm sure some of those will start to chip off. Now doing that gives us a little bit of a view of what's going on underneath. So obviously when you're doing these in normal letters, you wouldn't be able to see the end point like this and right. so then we get to go in again and 
And this is really trying to guess where your chisel's gonna end. Have you come in slightly more on one side than the other? Because we really wanna try and make sure that that central channel really is central. So occasionally, stop and have a look and decide, well, does it look like it's coming down the middle? And I think we are at the moment. taking that out I'm going to put my hammer down and I'm going to use fingers so I'm holding the handle in one hand and I'm using my hands in the other so now I can pare down and make sure that those sides really are nice and flat I haven't misjudged my angle with any one particular cut and I can square down and make sure that that's a nice smooth cut as I go through and then again back to the other side. I'm slightly up there, it hasn't come into the same angle as it started. And when I'm doing that, yeah, I'm just coming from there. Try and break those fibres gently, otherwise we can easily find ourselves just getting deeper and deeper. That's looking quite crisp now. There we go. Right, so now we've got that first channel done. So now we need to work on this end section here. Now let me just readjust the camera to show you what's going on. Let's have a look. So I'm gonna come in with the flat chisel, but on its side, trying to get an angle in like that. So that's gonna come in from there. So I've cut like that. Now I need to do the same from the other side. Trying to match those angles up, it all works well. So we're trying to reach the bottom and trying to reach the corner as well. Now what we don't want to do, see I've come in there, slightly missed that corner mark. So I'm going to do that again, hopefully. There. Now because I'm coming with the chingle, the, the chingle, this is called a chisel by the way, coming in from an angle like this, Coming into that section a little bit won't make too much difference. So let's see when we uncover it. Now I'm not gonna use the hammer for this point. So my chisel is gonna go on that line that I want from there and that I'm in the corner. But then I'm changing that up. And that's just gonna pair down there. And that's one side done. Now I'm gonna come in from the same from here. So I'm gonna start like this and then slowly rotate that in. Two sides done. Now here's the tricky bit. So now we've got to take our chisel and we've got to rotate it at the right angle, starting from here. So that's kind of three different angles we've got there. We've got the, the chisels tilted this way. It's turned that way and it also needs to go down this way. What we're trying to do is get this line from the chisel to match that bottom line inside there. That's what we're aiming for. And let's see if we can do that just nice and slow. See how the fibers just want to split that off? Now I'm not gonna just chip that away because that might just give me a nasty angle. So let's see if we can come and do the same thing in from this side. Okay, then we can kind of go in from here. And we get to see what we end up with. So unfortunately, as we as we go through some of this, 
it is a little bit blind. It's guessing what angle your chisel is going to need to be before you can actually see where it's going to finish. Like that. There we go. And a little bit of just finiddling just to try and get those loose fibers off to try and get a really neat tiny corner there. Something like that. <laughs> Give it a blow. I think we're about there with that one. So as we see we get more complicated shapes, we end up with um, lots of these end markings that we've done, but in smaller, tighter spaces. So on this Z, we've had to try and triangulate them there to try and come through here, which joins onto this groove through this point. That's got a triangulated section here to match on this one, and the same, and the same and continue and continue. So there we go. With a little bit of practice, you'll get nice, clean lettering that can just personalize anything that you make. That Z and T is going on a nice garden bench. Now you're gonna need a few tools for doing all of that. We've got links in the descriptions down below for things that you need if you haven't got them, from the proper carving chisels through to the just flat chisels like these. I um, really recommend these rider ones, they're absolutely super value for money, I haven't seen anything like them. Um, things like that, all down in the description and the little pocket knife, we'll put that in there as well. So go and sharpen your tools and we'll see you soon.